exactly. Are, are they lengthy games? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, um, they. It, they're games where you could get stuck for a long period of time. Right. I, I'm sure you could do a speed run of one of these games in, um, in a very short period of time, but they're kind of like, say, the old Metroid, where if you don't know what you're doing, it can take it's you like hours and hours. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, uh, Alan in uh, Great Britain wants to know, are player names always shown above players' heads online? That was, that's a good question. That's one that, that I had after seeing it. It seems like that can give away... Uh, someone who's hidden, or if you can see a life bar or a player name um, above their head, how's that work? Uh, I th uh, I don't think you see. Um, I don't know that you could toggle that off. I, I don't think you. S I it might even depend on the mode to a certain extent. Which, Not positive. Like which which one's show? Okay. Yeah, it, I, I don't think you like as in as in similar games. It's easier to identify your teammates than it is your, your adversaries. So your adversaries are the guys who don't have a big this guy's on your team uh, sign over his head. Cool. Um, th their, their names come up when, when you're kind of pointing and shooting at them. All right. Uh, Billy Monks from Virginia wants to know, can you toggle friendly fire for games? Or how, I mean, is it on all the time, or um, how does that work? I think, I think you might be able to toggle that when you set up a match. Uh, there, there's definitely a concept of friendly fire um, the game gives you a warning when you start shooting at one of your own guys, and I think it, it deals less damage than than when you're getting hit by an enemy. So there, there's definitely the game discourages you from blasting your own teammates, and you can blacklist people you don't want to play with, things like that. Um, it also keeps stats uh, like a, a very elaborate stats for everybody. So if if someone is being an abusive player, they can get kind of blacklisted by the entire community, and that be that. All right, Henrik from Sweden uh, wants to know, have the guns and subsistence been changed or have any guns been added? Any um, new weaponry there? Um, I, uh, there actually is at least one uh, new weapon that's available, which is the, the flamethrower. Um, you faced it in Metal Gear Solid 3 when you fought the Fury, uh, who's one of the bosses, but now you could actually use the flamethrower in multiplayer. And it's kind of a weird, crazy weapon because it just shoots these big, billowing clouds of fire. It's not just kind of a stream of fire as you see in in other games like this, but um, I, I would say like it doesn't necessarily add a, uh, like much in the way of new weapons, but this game makes the weapons that you have available uh, much more accessible, because again, everything from the dual mode where you're fighting against bosses, you get to use um, a lot of the weapons that get downplayed in the main single player game in more contexts and also in the online play. So it feels like they're new weapons, but that's mostly because there are a bunch of weapons in Metal Gear Solid 3, the original version, that you didn't really get to use very much at all unless you went out of your way to, you know, get the rocket launcher and fire at regular enemies with it, things like that. Cool. Now you could use the rocket launcher against, like, the earlier bosses in the game, uh, whereas normally you'd get that weapon very late. Nice. Um, Matthew asks, what happens when you die online? Do you become a ghost? Uh, depends on the mode. Um, in one of the modes, you do become a ghost. Um, in... in so only the rescue mission is it set up so that if you die, uh, you sit out for the rest of the round. So that's kind of the Counter-Strike style one. In some of the other modes, what you're trying to do is make the opposing side run out of life tickets. So you respawn almost right away, but every time you kill a guy on the enemy team, it's, it's kind of chipping away at their score and like the first team to uh, make the enemy you know, die the most often is the one that wins. So it's, uh, it's well implemented depending mm -hmm. on the mode, but um, apart from rescue mission, you don't have to sit out for, for very long at all. Cool. Uh, Don asks, how reliable is the cardboard box in multiplayer since everyone knows you can hide under it? Um, so that's, I, I, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, if there's just a cardboard box sitting yeah. there, wouldn't you just walk up and just shoot every box you so, see? So the cardboard box, uh, again, you know, a real staple of the Metal Gear series, and, and they've applied it what, uh, really well to online play. Um, because you, so you can hide in a cardboard box and kind of walk around and, and try to sneak up on your opponents and, you know, drop them down, shoot them in the head. But um, it's not that simple because you, if you see a cardboard box walking around, it's very easy to shoot. And, and there are other cardboard boxes lying around that don't have uh, anybody in them. So if you waste your time just shooting every cardboard box that gets in the way, you're going to give away your position. People are going to hear your gun. And again, these maps are small enough to where there might be someone around the next corner. If you waste your time shooting at a box, um, you're just wasting your time. Um, so it's one of the cool features of this. It seems to be balanced uh, really well. And in fact, uh, it seems a lot more useful in the online multiplayer than it does in the single player. Uh -huh. I mean, I think in 
in the single player Metal Gear Solid 3, the cardboard box is one of those kind of funny gimmicky features that you totally don't need. But in the online play, you do see a lot of people uh, using this, but not abusing it by any means. Cool. All right, one last question. Uh, I, have to, I have to know the answer to this. John in Jersey wants to know, can you choke enemies online? You, you cannot, ch you, you can drop them to the ground. You can't slit their throats. Um, I don't think you can choke them either. Oh. So the close quarters combat, it's not the same as when Snake uh, uses his dirty moves in the single player game. But uh, what you can absolutely do is grab the guy, throw him down, um, make him so that he's prone and defenseless and shoot him in the head. That uh, seems since to we're work talking about CQC, well. there was one, one more thing that, that came up. Is there any kind of counter system for that online? Can you counter um, CQC? The counter mode? system is you shoot the guy in the face before he gets close enough to you That's to throw you down. That's a pretty good counter system. Um, it, 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 again, it seems well balanced in online because um, you know a gun has the advantage of range. So if the guy is, uh, unless the guy really gets the drop on you, runs up on you from behind or gets you as you're coming around the corner, um, y you're you're going to have a lot of trouble getting close to someone who's who's uh, aiming at you because you're going to die really quickly, especially if the guy shoots you in the head. But really, no matter what. Cool. All right. Well, I mean, let let's sum it up. I mean, from the sounds of things, this sounds like it is a, a amazing value. Uh, you know, it's a it's a budget price package, not the full twenty dollars, but thirty is still uh, very cheap for games right. uh, with a whole lot to it. Um, you know, why don't you sum it up for us? So you know, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about. I it. mean. Look, it's already one of the best, one of the best kind of cinematic experiences and, and stories that you could find on the PlayStation 2. It maybe gets off to kind of a slow start, uh, but boy, those last few hours of this game are, are just totally incredible. And it's got some amazing characters, uh, some amazing plot points, um, still some of the best graphics and sound and overall presentation. So even just the underlying game itself. It's aged very well. It's definitely more fun to play now that it's got a better camera system. And now that the game's got a ton of these extras um, on top of everything that, that are really, they're, they're not just these throwaway extras, they're actually well worth your while. And there are some really good interactive ones like the original Metal Gear games and also like the Snake vs. Monkey stuff in the dual mode and some really cool non-interactive ones like the, the parody uh, cutscenes and, and the, the demo theater and all that. So this is just... This is the total package. I mean, if, if it's possible to criticize the, uh, Metal Gear Solid for being kind of single player only, now you can't do that because it's got really good online in there as well, which is you could put, right up, uh, you could put this online right up against any kind of similar uh, competitive shooter experience on the PS2, but it does a really good job of tying in uh, Metal Gear style play mechanics uh, along with the conventions of uh, multiplayer shooters. So it, it's got... It's kind of got something for everyone. So unless you're you're squeamish and you know can't take the crazy story, can't take yeah. the blood, that kind of stuff, there there's really no reason to miss out on this game. It's really it's really a one of a kind experience. It's got a weird story and a weird sense of humor to it, but it's something that you know commands the loyal following of so many people and and really with good reason. Cool. All right, Greg. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And, thanks uh, to all of you for, yeah, for your questions. Thanks to everyone out there for, for questions. And uh, we have the chat room open. We'll leave that open for a little while longer, and we'll be in there uh, chopping it up. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.